How you doing? I know it's been a while since I've seen you. I've uh, been pretty busy. Just got done recording an album with Westbound Situation uh, in beautiful Bloomington, Indiana. I'm in Brown County right now. And I had a day off, so I thought I would teach you a little bit about the Church Street Blues. And specifically, Punch Brothers version of the Church Street Blues, which is a little bit tricky. So let's dive right in. Okay, so we're in 5-4, and the strumming pattern is this. Well, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Now this is a generalization, not every uh, chord that Chris goes to is like this, but this is a good place to start. We'll do a dotted quarter note, so it's going to be down stroke, strum, ghosted down, up, down stroke, and then we're going to hit an upstroke after that, so da, da, that's the first bit, one and two and slowly, looks like that. I'll just teach you the version that we are strumming. Uh, after that, just to simplify things a little bit. Uh, so, so Chris tends to hit uh, not all the strings at the same time. So he'll so he'll alternate between hitting kind of these these three strings, these low three strings, and then the high three strings uh, with an open E, uh, which you don't want to play for every chord. There's a few chords where you want to avoid that, for, but for the most part. That open E's not, kind of nice. I like it. So we're going to do that downstroke. That upstroke is going to play the high three strings. And the next two downstrokes are going to be on the low three strings. So it looks like this. And then we're going to hit the high strings on the next two, uh, next two beats. And then back to the low strings after that. So all together it looks like this. That's a whole 5-4 measure right there. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now you just have to throw in the other chords. Super easy, right? It's not easy. And speaking of chords, let's talk about those real quick. So we start with an F chord. That F shape we start with is we play the A with the index, and then the middle is going to play the F and the C. Now, listening back to this, uh, Chris does something really cool that I didn't notice on the first few listens, and then I started watching some live videos, and I noticed him not putting the middle finger quite where it should be if you're going to play this shape. Uh, it, was, it was sort of low, and it was kind of covering most of the A string, but not all of the D string. So what Chris is doing right there is he's playing... Uh, along with playing 5-4 and singing, he's playing split string uh, on the D string. So let me let me show you that real quick. So in this F shape, we have A, we have F, and we have C. What he's doing is he's splitting the uh, D string between an E and an F note. So it sounds like this. He's doing that. The index is uh, covering this low A, but it's also covering the second fret of that D string. So you're getting this. And then the middle is covering an F and the C's. So this chord with all that going on sounds like this. The best way to think about this, because it's not easy, uh, is for the split string, your middle finger is doing the hard work. Uh, so instead of placing your middle finger and trying to just get the split string, worry about getting the C note. Uh, and instead of, if you were to play a C note, usually you'd want the uh, string to land right in the middle of your finger, kind of like that, right? But now, what we want to do is we want to move it up just a tick so that it's not centered, it's favoring the D string side of the A string. So I'm still able to hold that fifth, uh, but I have a little bit of overhang from that middle finger, and it's overhanging and hitting that uh, F note on that D string without buzzing the the other string. And this is this is tricky, uh, but so normal position, split string position. It's really small change from that to that. 
Uh, makes a world of a difference though. So he does that on the F, he also does that on the B flat. So uh, normally we would play a B flat like this. So we have the index covering the B flat and the F, and we have our ring finger covering that D note. Uh, so let's do the same thing we did with the middle finger in the F shape with the B flat shape ring finger. Uh, so it's gonna, instead of being dead center-ish, it's gonna be favoring that D string side to get that split string, okay? and that index is still holding down the B flat and the one F. So you hear the difference between that and that? It's a cool, very small detail, but I love it. And he does the same thing with the C. So uh, instead of playing a C like this, which is just like the B flat we just learned up two frets, uh, he's playing an A note in there with the G. So the best way to learn how to do this is to just focus on that D string with these split strings. So index is gonna cover the G side of the string, and then that middle and ring finger is gonna cover the A side of that D string. To try to get these on their own, to make sure you can get them to sound out right, okay? After that, count to five, and on every one beat, try to hit the downstroke of the chord going by. So uh, one, two, three, four, five, one, now you can add the chord rhythms to just a single string. So it sounds like this. One, two, three, four, five. Next is to add the A string note that you're playing. So with this F, you're gonna add a C. B flat, you're gonna add the D. Uh, C, you're gonna add the E, so. And then after that, you can add the full chord. music's really going to help you with that rhythm, uh, but essentially it's... So if you can just do this over one chord and get really good at it, uh, the rest of the tune isn't as bad as you think it is. And then that brings us to the chorus. So chords for the chorus go F, B flat, C, D minor, to a C, C minor. So he plays that B flat, like that, index, middle ring and then he switches to a uh, index ring pinky and then moves that down to play a D minor which is second fret on the G, third on the D, fifth on the A string to a C chord. The chorus can be tricky on those ascending chord lines uh, but there's a way to play that that makes it way easier in five. Uh, just follow the strumming pattern so So on the chorus chords going up and going down, they're breaking the measure in half between two chords. So you have a half note tied to an eighth note, and then you have an eighth note tied to a half note. So you're basically splitting that five right in half. So we want to play down, 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 up. So we want to play that down stroke first and then hold two other down strokes before hitting an up stroke on that uh, eighth note. So down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down, down. So the picking pattern slowly looks like this. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Try to hit those split strings and like I did just there. Uh, there it is. One, two, three, four, five. And this happens on the descending line as well, starting on the B flat. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So one really cool detail that Chris does is he starts to add rhythmic chops throughout the song. Uh, 
they he adds more of them every time a chorus goes by he he you know adds a few here and there so the first verse there are no chops the fiddle break after that first verse there begins the chop slightly there's a few of them in there uh, and then the next verse verse two uh, there happens to be more chops and then the last verse after the mandolin solo uh, he goes into almost full rhythm with a chop so the sheet music for this can be found on my website the tab will not be available just because I have not figured out how Sibelius can do split string on one string uh, without me doing a lot of work on that, uh, taking hours and hours. Uh, but instead, we can read the notation.